Hi there. Welcome to a demonstration on how to design a logical framework, or as it's typically known, a log frame. This video forms part of a series that we're working on called Components of an M&E Framework. And if you're new to our channel, my name is Mutsa Carol Chiamakovu. I'm an M&E specialist with about 10 years worth of experience, and I'm from Data Lab Africa. On this channel, we talk about all things M&E. Now let's get into it. If you recall, in the last couple of videos, we have been talking about a results framework and how that fits into a results-based management approach. If you have not seen those, this will be a very quick refresher, but I'd suggest that you watch them just to really understand how that forms part of the thinking around monitoring and evaluation. So if we think about our projects, as a project team, when we apply for funding, we have a main goal or a long-term impact that we want to make. And our funders are normally funding this outcome. They're interested in being a part of this. As an organization, we will then say, what can we pour into this project um, in terms of time, in terms of labor, the financial and resources and the stakeholders who we can have involved and putting all these together, we can then run a set of activities uh, in terms of workshops or trainings or interventions. And normally these activities we already have in place as an organization, as a service offering. And we think, or maybe we know that these activities will lead to this goal. Outlining your results framework will really help you plot the milestones that get you there. And so if you're not getting there, you'll be able to see what's missing. Now, when we run our trainings or our workshops, we have some immediate results that we call outputs. Those immediate results can be the number of people that we've trained. Maybe we've trained 5,000 people. Maybe we can run a pre and post evaluation to assess the knowledge that has been gained while we are there. And this is all stuff we can pretty much immediately say is a result of our intervention. What participants will then subsequently do, um, we call those short-term results of the program. Those are outcomes. How have their lives changed? Are there changes in behavior or attitude? Are they taking some subsequent actions to go towards that long-term impact that we want to see? Now, at all these levels, we would be measuring um, success in some shape or form. Here, I've articulated only kind of three milestones to get to the impact. So after your activity, you see something immediately, you see something a bit later, and then you see your impact. But really in practice, you can have multiple levels to get to your goal. And that's okay too. Just plot them as you expect them um, to happen. For this demonstration, I've heavily leaned on workshops and trainings, but we could, for example, talk about clinics. Um, maybe you are wanting to build clinics in a particular community so that you can increase the access to healthcare. That is your long-term achievement or goal or impact. Now, your activities would be building clinics, uh, perhaps training staff and procuring the equipment to um, set up these clinics and your immediate results, you could talk about how many of these clinics you've um, put in place. You could talk about the number of staff that have been trained and then also separately, the number of staff that have then been hired. You can talk about the number of equipment you have sourced, ETC. What could happen after you leave is that people hire even more um, support staff, perhaps they even start some health programs um, or support health programs like uh, around you know family health and women's health 
uh, and all those are short-term results of your program that you can see are linked to your initiative with the main long-term impact being an increase to uh, healthcare, increased access to healthcare for that community. Now, as you can see, the framework uh, can apply to many different kinds of projects. When we then want to talk about a log frame or a logical framework, it's usually because a results framework is not enough. In m and &E, I always advise people to keep things simple. If you have a really short, non-complex project, this is normally enough just to outline what are the milestones and to think about how you're going to collect your data. But the more complex your projects get, for example, with the clinics, the more important it is to then go further and build a log frame where you can plan what are your indicators of success at each of these levels and how are you going to measure them and what risks are um, aligned with the work that you are doing so that you are well prepared. I'm going to show you now how we build onto this for a log frame. As you can see, I have just transposed my results framework. That is the quickest trick to starting a log frame is to really just understand that it's a result, it's basically your results framework transposed and each of these levels forms a row for your ultimate log frame table. So normally this is a column on your log frame and your additional information that you want to gather about these items, first of all, you want to summarize your project activities for each of these levels. Summarize your project um, activities, summarize your project outputs, summarize your project outcomes, and then very clearly state your goal. Next, you want to define your indicators um, and your indicators of success for each of the items that you have listed in your summary. Once you know what your indicators of success are, you want to make sure that they're measurable. So how are you going to demonstrate or how are you going to collect data to show that your project is progressing as planned or progressing. <laughs> um, planning is just something we do, but you know, as life will have it, we don't always end up where we thought we would. And finally, the risks. When we talk about risks, we mean at each of these levels, what are the assumptions that you're making that may or may not be fulfilled? How are you going to verify those assumptions? If there's a risk um, concerned in that scenario, how can you mitigate that risk ahead of time? In this column, you want to be as elaborate as possible so that if you can't progress from one step to the next in your milestones, you can always come back to your risks and say, what did not work well? What did I assume was going to happen and perhaps did not happen? This is a good place to start your investigations when things are going not quite as planned. Now let's fill this out together with an example. Suppose we want to equip 50 women in Kwekwe to become self-sustaining market gardeners in a year. Kwekwe is a region in Zimbabwe. And this is an example I'm borrowing from a previous video uh, on the results framework. So we have some women that we want to become essentially agripreneurs. And as an organization, we might already have some activities that we know we can effect to bring about this change. So maybe we already have a market gardening technical training that they can go through. We can also do some market sourcing for these agripreneurs. We can also... Uh, run a workshop on developing a sustainable business so that they're not just farmers, but they're um, business owners as well. 
If we run these activities successfully, what we want to see is that 50 females have completed the agripreneurs training in three months. And maybe we also want to see uh, some market partners established uh, from the market sourcing. And these are the immediate results of our trainings. You can break down your outputs into a lot more levels than this, but I'll just keep it simple for the sake of this demonstration. The more short-term results or um, the outcomes that will come from having done our intervention and achieved success um, are that we could find a vibrant community that has better pricing and differentiation for local suppliers because they suddenly 50 whole extra um, suppliers of food in the market. We could also find um, that these women have impacted their families and now each family has a sustainable source of income and food and maybe this has already come into play within eight months and so within a year we should be able to see the impact or the goal that we were aiming for. Now this could sit in a results framework alone. For a simple project this would be enough. But as you can probably tell, this is not as simple as I'm making it out to be here. Um, and even now, a log frame would really give us a little bit more insight into how to plan um, for the success of this project. So let's talk a little bit about what assumptions we're making about moving from one step to the next. When it comes to our trainings, we're assuming that the potential female participants will have no barriers to joining such a venture. Remember, we're talking about the Kwekwe region in Zimbabwe. Are women there empowered to go out on their own to professional development activities or self-development activities? That is not always the case. If we look at our outputs, a risk we could have there um, in terms of the local market partners being established. An assumption we're making there is that the community as a stakeholder is going to be willing to partner with startup initiatives because these women have just been trained. How do we mitigate the risk of that um, eventuality? How do we bring on our stakeholders? And as you're probably thinking now, this calls for some resources. Just managing your risk will call for resources. And so if you had not gone through this process, you would be assigning all your funds to your activities and hoping that the rest of it happens. Planning this out will show you just how you need to distribute your resources. Let's give another example of a risk. We were talking at the outcome level about the women impacting their families. And we're assuming that training a female agripreneur is going to result in improving the livelihood of her family. But some families are not so supportive. And so perhaps this happens for less than 50 families. And as we're talking about this, it's maybe then important to think about how much uh, should we blow these numbers up by so that we have 50 in the end. Maybe it's a better idea to start by training 100 or even 150 so that when we have fall through or dropouts along the way, we still get to our goal. Just a suggestion to think about. Now, we've spoken about some risks, but like I said, you need to be really elaborate here. You need to think as broadly as you can about all kinds of eventualities so that you are well prepared. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how we come up with indicators and I'm going to do it only for one of these levels. So let's do it for the outcome level. An indicator of success um, in terms of families that now have a sustainable source of income and food an indicator of success there, if we wanted to go and see if that's happening, 
would be to go and find farming activity that is actually supplying food for the family and that there's a surplus for them to be able to sell. Now, if we look at our other outcome, a vibrant community with better pricing and differentiation for local suppliers. Coming up with an indicator of success for this outcome is a little bit difficult because this one is not as smartly um, or as clearly defined as our other outcome. It's difficult to know what would be an indicator of success here. What do we go and look for? When we talk about vibrant community, what do we mean? What exactly is better pricing and differentiation? Um, what is our benchmark? So this outcome here is poorly stated. I would suggest that when you are defining your outputs and your outcomes, be specific, make sure that they're measurable and attainable. And it's important if you can to include a time bound aspect um, to your outcomes or whatever your milestones are. Something that we're thinking about here is, is price differentiation actually relevant to this particular project? So think about your milestones and think about how well they're aligned with your um, desired objectives. So we're going to skip that one. Let's go on to means of verification. If we know that this is our indicator of success, that there's farming activity happening, how do we verify that? How do we collect that data? We can have monthly visits to evaluate the progress of each household's farm. And maybe at those monthly visits, we can collect um, comprehensive information about what they have on the farm, uh, et cetera. This is our means of verifying that success or progress is being made with regards to that indicator with regards to that milestone or that outcome. Now, this is how we build our log frame. I'm not going to go through the whole table for the sake of time. Uh, you can try to do this yourself. In the show notes below, I'll link a table that you can make a copy of and go through this exercise just to try and understand how to do this better. You'll notice in the top right-hand corner, I did not include a risk or assumption for our impact or our goal. That was deliberate. Normally, we don't have a risk or assumption at the goal level because all of the risks that you list here at all the other levels are essentially the same risks that would be aligned with your overall goal. And so this is normally empty. Sometimes you might see some risks listed here that maybe don't lend themselves well to some of these outcomes or outputs or activities. But normally if I see something like that, um, as a specialist, I know that that is a sign of poor planning. Whatever risk is in here usually means you have an additional milestone that you have not listed somewhere here that you need to think about. And so if you find yourself adding risks here, try and figure out, is that a milestone? And at what point does it come into your journey from your activities to achieving your goal? Finally, I had nothing at the level of inputs because we don't normally have uh, inputs within our log frame. Our resources that we're putting into our project don't lend themselves well to this structure of a summary and indicators and verifying and risks. But how we allocate resources is definitely informed by this log frame. And so I would suggest doing this before you even do your um, costing for your funding application. Now, a couple of uh, definitions that I've seen for the logical framework are a little bit difficult to understand, but given what you've seen, I think we're in a position to give a very simple definition that we can work with. 
a definition that we can remember. A logical framework is basically a planning tool. It's a planning tool. We develop it based on what we, what our project goal and their activities and our objectives are. So if we know what those are, maybe from a results framework, then the logical framework is simply a planning tool. I'd like to go into some tips um, that you may or may not have noticed as we were putting the log frame together. First of all, start with the results framework. This seems like doing double the work, but it helps you to think, um, to co compartmentalize your thinking. If you start with outlining how you're going to move from your inputs through to your goal, and you're not looking at this big table that you have to fill in, it's a lot easier to get that structure right and get that first column of the project summary already done just by thinking about your results framework. By the time you get to your log frame, you already know that you've got that set and your log frame is just building on top of that. Starting with the log frame without a results framework can be a very confusing process. Mm -hmm. So I would say work this way around first. Um, there's a debate about whether you should go top down or bottom up. I'll just show you what I mean by that. Um, so top down would be start with your goal and work your way down to your outcomes and outputs and activities. Bottom up would be the other way around. Um, you'll notice that I did the goal and then I talked about the activities and went uh, bottom up. How you do it is really up to you and it differs from project to project because of what you have access to and what you already have in place in order to achieve the goal. So do what works for your scenario. You may um, go between your goal and activities or your outcomes and activities quite a bit as you put this together uh, and that's also fine. So the results framework definitely helps just to start with a solid understanding of what you're trying to achieve. Number two, make sure you have clear, logical steps to reach the goal. Are your milestones um, laid out in good causal logic? We have to start at A to get to B, to get to C, to get to D, and so on. Number three, Make sure your project summary is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. As you saw, we had that one milestone or outcome that just wasn't very um, smartly or uh, clearly defined, and it was very difficult to then plan for it. So if your summaries or your uh, milestones are smart, then it's easy to move forward. As far as possible, try to minimize risk in your planning. So if you see that you have a lot of risk, think about what milestones to add to your um, journey from your activities to your goal. Try to minimize your risk just in your planning by making sure that you've put things in place to mitigate the risk that could happen. Finally, Try and keep to a manageable number of indicators. For projects that are complex, it's very easy to end up with 50 indicators. Um, try and keep it at a very small number. I would say 10 is really great. 10 is a, a good, um, solid, manageable number. Uh, a little bit more is okay. Once you start getting to 15, 20, you should be concerned and perhaps think about either cutting it down or uh, reassigning some responsibilities. I think we will stop there for today. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, um, give us a thumbs up below. Please subscribe to this channel if you like what we have to share. 
my name is Mutta and my email is on the screen in case you want to reach out to me uh, and our website is there as well. If there's something you'd like to see that maybe you haven't quite found a great explanation for on YouTube and you'd like me to give a go, please put it in the comments below. And uh, if you do use the logical framework to try and build something, let me know how that goes. Thanks for watching and see you next time.